Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin ve sallallahu ve sellem ala nebiyyine Muhammed <coughs> ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem emme bera habite fillah continue on in our study of usul al-sitta and I wanted to mention something very important before we get into the first asl min usul the first uh, foundation principle from amongst those foundation principles and this is because of the relevance of it for us understanding issues in Aqidah in general and also because it has great relevance with this uh, with this treatise we're studying because this is a treatise of Ittiqad. So bear with me and we're going to try to simplify things as simply as we can but make it mufid also beneficial uh, with some knowledge that may be new for some and for others it may not. But let's uh, go into this very important aspect um, with regards to understanding Islamic text and how we understand Aqidah. So we need to talk about something called Istidlal. Istidlal. Uh, before we get to Istidlal, we're going to talk about Dalil. So Dalil, Ahabatifillah, in the simplest form, uh, dalil, we usually translate it and call it evidence. When we say dalil, what's your dalil for something? Meaning, what is your evidence to show that what you're saying or what you're claiming is sound? Where are you getting this from? What you you ala hadha, What is showing you to lead to your conclusion? Uh, and so. Uh, Dalil, we're not going to get into the intricacies of Dalil because all of these issues, some of these issues relate to usul of fiqh and then and the level of the Arabic language and it is a bit difficult to translate all of those points uh, but going to uh, Dalil will just say your evidence and then regarding that when we talk about istilal, istilal, a lot of times when we have the alif, the sin and the ta in front of a noun or uh, a, you know as a verb then this is uh, how it usually means to talab shay you know to to request something to seek something so when we say istilal we're talking about we're talking about uh, asking for the or um, seeking the deal seeking evidence seeking evidence or seeking evidence to prove something okay is the loud so this is how we use evidence to arrive at our conclusion it's how we use it but and to give us an example some of these narrations will give us uh, an understanding which will be should suffice us to, to make our point First, uh, there's a narration on Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala. Anhu qal, adalu Allah ta'ala, wa dalil al-Qur'an, wal mubayyin al-Rasul, wa mustadillu ul al-ilm, ul al-ilm, hadhi al-qawaid al-Islam. This is a beautiful statement and we're going to do the best we can to, to translate it for us to translate it for you but so imam it's narrated that imam ahmed uh narrated on imam ahmed that he said that allah he said adalu and then he said allah ta'ala so allah is we might say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guide you know, he's Al-Hadi, he's the guide, he guides us, and he is the one who gives uh, the Qur'an is his speech, okay? The Qur'an is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so the Qur'an is the Dalil. We use the Qur'an as Dalil, we use it as evidence, okay? So when we say Dalil, we say Dalil, a Dalil is evidence so we use the Quran uh, the Quran is evidence a dalil Allah is al dal meaning he is the one who 
gives you the guidance or gives you the evidence, so to speak. You know, and the Quran is from the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thayyib. Well, Mubayyan, the one who clarifies, is the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa mustadillu ulil ilm. So the people of knowledge are the ones who seek evidence. So the scholars, they seek evidence. That's why we say uh, 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 the scholars are not a hujja. When you say, oh, Sheikh so-and-so said this. If I say it related to our treaties, Sheikh Muhammad, uh, Muhammad ibn Wahab said this. Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said this. That's not called dalil in the Sharia. It's not dalil. But rather, they are mustadil. They need the Quran in the Sunnah. They use that to derive their evidence. But they in themselves are not evidence. Very important. Because when we see a lot of Ahl bidah like the Sufis and a lot of these other groups, they take their scholars as evidence. So for example, you say, well, my sheikh said this. My sheikh said he's in Mecca making hajj now, even though it's not in the hajj season. It, it's true. My sheikh said I should cry and look at his picture. My sheikh said that if you go to the grave and you supplicate to it, that this is not shirk. My sheikh says the essence of the human being uh, it can be supplicated to in this non-Muslim and Muslim, and they're not they're not uh, dead because they are the essence of people, and so you are not worshiping, uh, you know, on and on and on. They have very intricate arguments that are come from their intellect and come from philosophy often, but they don't come from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So uh, the the general followers of those Sufi Imams and stuff, is they are taking their Sheikh as Dalil. They are taking their Sheikh as Dalil. And this has to do with even the issue of Taqlid. But we're not going to go get too far off. We're going to keep on as basic as we can. I'm going to try my best. So, uh, and then, so Al-Mustadil is the one who's seeking uh, evidence and this is the, the per people of knowledge. And then Imam Ahmed said, Have he qawa'id al Islam. These are the principles of Islam, or these are the yeah, these are the principles of Islam. Showing, you know, the importance of this for how you understand your Islam. Because when you look at a lot of the differences that you have from being from Ahl Sunnah compared to many other groups, is you see it has to do with some issue in this chain of understanding in that they either take their imam as the dal as the as the da, as the dal as the 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 full guide as if he, the revelation is from him or they take him as the uh, as dalil they take him as the proof and the evidence himself instead of the quran or the sunnah if you understand i hope that that's clear now because at the end of the treaties the last uh asl from the usul sitta it'll actually be much clearer and much simpler for the information that we're going to need for understanding this book. But I'm trying to lay a foundation for you that you can deal with with Aqidah in general. طيب. لقد قام مذهب أهل السنة والجماعة في أبواب الاعتقاد على ثلاثة مصادر. And we're talking about the Mestr last lesson. وَهِيَ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةَ نَبِيهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ وَإِجْمَعَ سَلَفَ الْأُمَّةِ So, be with me in my Arabic. أَهْلُ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ They understand Aqeedah and build their creed upon three Foundations. So very important because this is how we differ with the Khawarij. This is how we differ with the Tekfiris. This is how we differ with all of those groups, all the various Sufi groups and all these uh, various sects. The Ma'tazila, the Jahmiya, Karamiya, Jamaat al-Ahbash, the Ashaira, you know, Ashadis, all these various creeds. We differ with some of them. Some of them may take some of those same masadir, everyone has to say something from the Qur'an. But it's how they understand the Qur'an. So he said that our foundation, the foundation of Ahl Sunnah is the Book of Allah 
and the Sunnah of the Prophet, his Prophet وسلم, and the consensus of the Salaf of this Ummah, of the, the Salaf of this Ummah, meaning the Sahaba, Tabi'een, Wutba'a Tabi'een, those the earliest generations, whom the Prophet والسلام, said, يلونهم, The best people is my generation, then those who followed them, then those who followed them. But this is some important thing, points before we get into the treaties. Just so we understand why, how is it that someone says la ilaha illallah and they actually believe that it's from the Quran and from the Sunnah to uh, supplicate to the dead. How do they come up with it? We have to understand how does Ahlul Sunnah uh, understand Islam? How do we understand our creed first before we can even begin to open up those doors on how they understand and how they um, uh, deduce and rationalize their creed. They rationalize their creed. Ahl Sunnah builds it upon a foundation, upon usul, upon qawaid. And here's some very important principles that we're going to go over now. First, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah yusallamuna tisliman mutlaqan li kulla ma saha fi nusus al wahi. Very important. So the first thing, I'm going to write it simple. Ahl Sunnah. Ahlul Sunnah uh, is comforted with what is uh, sound evidence. Uh, Ahlul Sunnah is comforted by sound evidence, meaning that which is sound from the Quran, uh, of course the Quran, and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, if it's an authentic hadith, that Ahlul Sunnah says we believe it. We don't debate it. We don't say, well, you know, it is probably either, you know, by by all the ways that people try to change the meaning. And these we're talking about aqidah especially, okay? Uh, like al-asma'i wa sifat, how we understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. This is how we differ with the asharis, predominantly in this area of, of um, the creed regarding Allah's divine names and attributes. Okay, that's how we, we differ with them. So, Ahl Sunnah affirms and is comforted by those nusus. We accept those nusus. Secondly, and in this regard, Qali Imam Zuhri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Min Allah Risala, Wa Rasulihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al Balag, Wa Alayna Taslim. So, Imam Al Zuhri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, that from Allah is the message. And it was upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to articulate that message, you know, to, to give that message to mankind. And it's upon us, Taslim, to accept that, fully accept that message. That's uh, the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah. Thanian, the second point, Ahlus and the Ahl Sunnah. مجمعون على أخذ بكل ما سحى النبي سنة النبوية في مسائل الاعتقاد. So أهل السنة is uh, they have uh, they are united in uh, taking anything uh, everything which is sound proved in the authentic Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in the issue. Of, uh, of creed. And this is very important because this is where, and this comes to do with the study of hadith, the hadith sciences, mutawatir and al-ahad. We're not going to get into those issues. But listen to the state of, statement of Imam uh, Ibn Abdul Bar, which affirms what Ahl Sunnah and what I'm talking about here. Qali Imam Ibn Abd, uh, Abdul Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Wa ajma'u ahl al -ilm. من أهل الفقه والأثر في ج في جميع الأمصار في ما علمت على قبول خبر الواحد العدل وإيجاب العمل به إذا ثبت ولم ينسخه غيره من أثر أو إجماع إلى آخر كلامه. So Imam uh, Ibn Abdul Bar, رحمه الله تعالى, he said the أهل السن uh, أهل العلم, the people of knowledge, they have a consensus. From the scholars of fiqh, jurisprudence, and athar, meaning ahla hadith, from all the various continents, you know, that, 
from, from what he knows, okay? He said, from what I know, about accepting a narration which has a single trustworthy narrator and that it is an obligation to practice it. And this is a big difference between a lot of the Ahl al and, it, it, and as long as it hasn't been abrogated by another uh, narration or by the ijma, he said, or by consensus of the scholars that they... So, this is a very important point because Ahl al-Sunnah, basically, we accept the Nasus, whether it's Khabar uh, Ahad or, or Khabar Wahid, a thiqa, or uh, otherwise, whereas a lot of uh, other groups, they say, well, no, they put doubt regarding hadith. They put doubt regarding hadith, so then they can then they can go just to the Quran and they say, well, you know, it's just from the Quran and we follow what's in the Quran. So they use that as a proof and they belittle hadith. So it makes, of course, you come up with a wholly different uh, understanding of Islam and what's acceptable and Aqidah. So that's an important point. Uh, the third point, our foundation, Ahl Sunnah, makes istilal with is that Ahl Sunnah does not use weak hadith for their Aqidah. So if something is weak, uh, then we do not use it as is as dalil. We do not make istilal of it. You know, we don't seek to use that as evidence to say uh, we believe it. For example, if there's a weak hadith and it says something about the malaika and it's a weak hadith and we don't have any other evidence to support that what was said in there or if it's a narration of the Salaf because a lot of times people they like to read books of the Salaf but they don't know if they're authentic or not meaning this the narration the particular narration if it hasn't been checked by Ahl Hadith and then they might even use that as an issue of Aqidah like for example in my research I came across an Athar about the Khawarij it was from one of the Salaf and I mentioned that, and I remember a sheikh that I, I spoke to about my risala, and he said, and he told me that qaida, that we don't take, this is not something that's authentic, authenticated, we, meaning there's no evidence from the Prophet wasallam about this, and we don't even take these athar of the salaf be, uh, regarding issues of aqidah that are not, that we have no evidence from the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, from for you know this is, could be a tabi'i or it's it's by a tabi'i that he's he may he from his own ijtihad and, and general understanding maybe he didn't come with a new aqidah no but rather he said something uh, a statement which cannot be attributed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay and I would have to give you the exact example so you can understand that we're not making tabdi of uh, our salaf as salih so, so that way you can tasawwur al mas'ala, but that's okay. I just want to give you an idea that we don't use da'if, weak hadith, like Jama'at al they have their book, um, uh, their book with the six, I think the six, uh, I forgot the name of their book, Fadail al-A'mal and the other one, and they use that, and in it has many, uh, fabricated narrations as, as Ahl Hadith have, that have looked in those books and they make istilal, they use it for issues in even Aqidah and not just related to Mu'amalat Wallahu Musta'an Another important principle of Ahl Sunnah regarding istilal is that Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah uh, uses, the, takes the apparent meaning of text as their asl. This is the foundation. This is how we differ so much with a lot of other sects. I'm talking about sects. I'm not talking about uh, jama'at, like a Akhwana Muslimin or something, because Akhwana Muslimin is not a sect. They are a jama'at. They are a group that may have people who have even mainly Salafi Aqidah even inside their group, but it's just that they go off on political matters. Or they may have somebody who commits shirk from their group who doesn't have the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah. So they are a group, but they're not like a, a sect with one, the same uh, creed. When we talk about a sect, 
We're talking about like the Horatage. They have certain aspects of their creed. We're talking about the Ashidis. They have certain aspects that are from their creed that make them Ashidi. Or the Mu'tazila. Certain aspects of their creed that make them Mu'tazili. Okay. The point being a Habitifillah is that uh, Ahlul Sunnah, their asl is that they take they, the text regarding Aqidah and creed from, from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they take it at its apparent meaning. That's the asl. Uh, without changing the meaning, without belittling those, uh, you know, negating those uh, characteristics, for example, the sifat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, or without asking how, or without making an example. So we don't say, for example, Ahl Sunnah says, and here's an example of that. Ahl Sunnah, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, uh, uh, Ar-Rahman ala Ars Istawa. The most merciful rose above his throne. Okay? Rose above his throne. Ahl Sunnah says, we accept that on the Zahir. We accept the, the apparent meaning of that. We're not going to change the meaning. We're not going to say it means he has power over the throne. We're not going to change the meaning, the actual letters of it. Tahrif al 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 istilahi or in the letters, we're not going to change the meaning. We're not going to negate the meaning and say no, he doesn't rise, because that's like his creation. We're not going to say any of that. Al Sunnah doesn't ask how, but we believe in reality that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala rose above His throne in a manner that suits His Majesty. That's it. We don't go beyond that. That is a characteristic of Ahl Sunnah. But Ahl Bid'ah, instead, like the Ashidis, for example, they'll say, no, we can't accept that. We have other meanings we're going to use for the word Istoa uh, to mean such and such, to mean Istola, that he took the Arsh by power, or all kind of uh, strange cons concepts because they don't want to make a resemblance between Allah and His creation, which is a good thing. They don't want to make a resemblance between Allah and His creation. But however, they flee to another extreme. That's the problem. That's where we differ with uh, the Ashadis, especially in those issues of Al-Asma'i wa Sifat. Uh, another example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, Yanzilu rabbuna tabaraka ta'ala thkulu thulath al-layl al-akhir. Fayuqul. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, in a Sahih Hadith, I believe it's in Muslim, where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yanzilu Rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala kulu thulatha layl al-akhir fi yukul. That our Lord descends to every last third of the night, every to, to the lowest heaven of the night, uh, the lowest heaven every last third of the night, and says, and then to the rest of the Hadith. So we say, yes, Allah, Allah does that, because we have an authentic Hadith, we take it on its own, apparent meaning and we don't ask how we don't say how or our brains can't imagine that wow that sounds strange well this is the 21st century well how can you do that because china their time is this time in seattle is this time in uh, uh birmingham it's this time no we don't we don't look at that we don't ask cave we don't ask how but rather we accept the nasus that's the difference that's what ahl sunnah does and so ahl sunnah takes the vahir the uh, the, the apparent meaning of the text. Uh, likewise, there's other important principles with regards to that. A last important principle, which is very important, we mentioned it prior to this. And the Fahim as Salaf as Salim and Sahaba wa Tabi'een, women Tabi'ahum bi Ihsan, lin Nasus al Wahiyain, Hujjatun Mu'tabira. So that Ahl Sunnah, they take the, the understanding of the Salaf as, an, as a Hujjah, as an evidence as something that you must follow if the Salaf have agreements on a particular issue in Aqidah, which is support uh, a particular understanding from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not meaning that we have no delil from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, but that they have an understanding which is based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's a hujjah. That's a proof that that's something you have to follow. Whereas uh, some of Ahl Bidah, some of them, they will use, as we said, their scholar as a proof. So instead, they will say, well, my, my sheikh said, O Imam Abu Hassan al, uh, Abu Hassan al Ashari, rahimahullah ta'ala, said in the beginning of his development as a, an alim, 
He said such and such, and we believe his Aqidah as such and such. But he had different stages, and at the end he died upon the sun, on the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the evidence supports that he was on the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and his Itqad, he threw away the bid'ah that he had fallen into prior to that. So they use his statement as if it's a hujjah. They use the evidence of a scholar or a name, and they even take a name, you know, we're Ashari. Where uh, Mu'tazili, where this Jahmi, whatever they take names of individual, uh, of particular individuals. Whereas Ahl Sunnah takes the Sunnah as their name. They take the other names, Ahl Hadith, Ahl Athar, Salafi, or Salafiyun, all of these names which go back to evidences in the Shara and do not go back to a specific person. And I hope that's clear. So those are some of the most important things that I want to mention with regards to this before we get into the treaties so you can get an, an idea of why we differ with a lot of these groups in these usul. How come these, these uh, groups have a different usul? How come they have scholars that have some who memorize the books of hadith? They memorize thick books of thick. They memorize the Quran and the different recitals. Uh, ways of reciting the Quran, the Qiraat, they also, you know, you have some that memorize immense amount of works that they are not uh, jahil at all, by any means. Some that are powerful in ilm, but they go astray in issues of Aqidah because of their rationality, because of the cup of bid'ah that they sipped from, and as far as their istilal, as far as how they got evidence. They didn't go back to those key sources. And I have a book from the Jamaat al Ahbash that I was given many years ago. And if you read the seerah of, uh, of uh, Herari, I forgot his, his name, uh, the, the leader of uh, Jamaat al Ahbash who died so many years ago, maybe in the past 10 years. His, and I've been to Herari as well, his, when you read the seerah, and actually the book I have, it was his refutation of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And in fact, if I recall, he was making takfir of either both of them or one of them, okay, in his book. And I still have that book, and I'll keep that book, of course. It's a hujjah against them. And to understand their arguments and their logic. The point being, a on the back, if you were to read his seerah, if it's true, all the scholars that he studied with, of course, they were all various Sufi a tariqa, but he studied and he memorized so much in the various sciences so you can see how he can deceive the people and you could not debate with a person like this unless you're on a high level of scholarship as far as uh, you know he could lose you in you know his 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 strength in the language his strength of course in the Quran his strength in in s s memorizing hadith text but it's that it's the loud that's where his asl of going astray. He, he wasn't taking back, going back for his aqidah to the way to understand the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf as Abdullah Herari, that's his name. And that, instead, they go back to Ahl Kalam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Alaihi Wasallam.